Greetings, I'm here today with another fitness tracker review. This time it is the More Pro ECG. I've been wearing this thing for about a week now. Uh, the company reached out to me and offered me a unit in exchange for a fair and honest review. And that's what this is. And I will start everything out by saying I had come to love a cousin to the More Pro ECG. That was their More Pro HRV. I've been wearing this watch for months, um, primarily to get a good understanding of my sleep and uh, heart rate variability. All right. Well, guess what? I found a new favorite. This uh, More Pro ECG is going to take up residence on my wrist now. It's got the one button functionality where you just press it and cycle through the screens. It will uh, give you the time. Obviously, you can change various display uh, styles and whatnot through the app and we'll get into that in a bit uh, you just tap, tap it again it gives you your steps your mileage your kilocalorie kilo -cal burn it gives you your heart rate it can take your blood pressure that's a really unique feature in this watch i really like it when it's incorporated with everything else like the uh, outstanding sleep tracking spo2 that uses uh, blood oxygen pulsimetry to give you your blood oxygenation um it will track your running. If you do a long press here, it will get you in the running mode. And then, of course, you can turn it off. This little button on the bottom here is actually an electrode. And if you're doing the ECG or the electrocardiogram measurement, um, and I'll show you that through the app, but you would press and hold while that's on your wrist, and it uses the uh, the electrical pulses through your body to get give you an ECG or an electrocardiogram and I'll talk a little bit of how and why that's useful. So I've come into the app here and right off the bat you see this nice big display of your total steps uh, per day and the number of hours of sleep you got last night actually had a good night's sleep. Uh, your, your step count chart here below that and now this uh, sleep uh, window here is a greatly enhanced version over the previous one the uh, more pro hrv this uh more pro ecg watch does a better sleep analysis and if we type in here uh, i should say tap on there we get a gauge of your light sleep versus dark sleep and this pink uh line or coloration up above actually gives you your rapid eye movement time which is really wild i don't know how they determine that um but it just gives overall really good sleep analysis. Um, again, in my opinion, it, they do the best job in the industry of tracking sleep. Uh, I like it much better than anything else I've ever tried. Okay, it tells you when you fell asleep, when you woke up. Love, love, love their sleep analysis. It does heart rate throughout the day, continuous heart rate mode. I think every 10 minutes or so, I don't know for sure. Um, but it does continuous heart rate. Personally, I like to use, I like to see what my resting heart rate is or what my lowest heart rate is. That's usually while I'm sleeping. If I'm at around 49, 50 to 52, I know I'm, I haven't overdone it in the gym. I haven't been going too hard in the kayak or on a bicycle. I'm giving my body enough time to rest and recover. Um, so I really look at that, that low heart rate to make sure that's in an acceptable range for me. If that's high when I sleep, uh, I just added another off day from the gym and just to take another rest and recovery day. Gives you your average heart rate, your highest, your lowest. Okay, you can show all data and it will show you all the measurements it took over the course of the day. Um, and uh, below that, moving down the main thing here, it does blood pressure. I really like this. This is a new measurement for me to have a device that takes blood pressure uh, blood pressure along with uh, giving you heart rate and heart rate variability. So I really like this. Again, I primarily use this to look at my lowest blood pressure as I'm sleeping. You see 112 over 71. Ever since I was a small child, doctors have told me my blood pressure has always been on the high side of normal. You see my latest blood pressure measurement here was 123 over 79. My average is 120 over 80, but again, I like to look at the lowest while I'm sleeping, 112 over 71. And I just like to keep an eye on this to make sure my blood pressure hasn't gone up, because that could be an indi early indication uh, that something is going wrong. And uh, then, you know, see a doctor and look more into it to figure out what's happening. Again, one of my favorite features, heart rate variability. Again, this tracker does an outstanding job of keeping track of it while you sleep. Um, 
it this is a measurement of how variable your heartbeats are and actually the more variable are, they are the less stress you are under so you actually want your heart rate variability to be high and you see I'm up in this green zone here um, if I'm under stress or I've worked too hard in the gym multiple days in a row and have not allowed my time rest uh, for rest and recovery you'll see that number drop down that's how I know I'm not recovered I need to uh, take it easy for any athletes out there, if you want to um, find a convincing reason why you should stop having alcoholic beverages, uh, have a drink or two and then sleep with this thing on and you will see your heart rate variability drops and your heart rate goes up as you sleep. So boy, if you ever needed even more uh, evidence, uh, this is going to this is gonna prove you exactly what effects that has on you and uh, to stay away from it. Blood oxygen saturation through pulse oximetry. This tells you uh, what percentage of your uh, blood oxygenation level you are. Anywhere above 95, 95 to 100% is considered normal. This will tell you your apnea times during the night and any hypoxia times. That's where you're without oxygen for a while when you sleep. Your respiratory rate, your cardiac load. And if you click the little buttons on all of them, it will define the terminology and it will give you ranges of what's normal and acceptable uh, for sleep apnea here. Um, you know, it gives you a nice explanation of what all these things are. So it gives you really good indications of all of this stuff. Now, the ECG. Let's get into the discussion, but this device does the ECG. It has both green and red diodes and I'll show you that in a minute. I am not a doctor, I am not a cardiologist, I am not an expert, but let's get into a brief explanation. Now, ECG or electrocardiograms are really measuring the electrical pulses in your heart with each heartbeat. The first wave you see here is what's called the P wave, and I'm just going to go through these. This second wave where you, uh, you start is depolarizing. If you think of this as an isoelectric point, your body is made up of ions and this is why doctors may say that you have a uh, electrolyte imbalance because your your body is charged there's electrical pulses uh, as we all know that's what fires your heart that's what fires your nerves so that's really what this line is it's looking at the charges up and down the second wave or this uh, depolarization wave before the right preceding the heartbeat is called the Q wave the big guy here is the R wave the um, next little wave that goes below the line here, or negative, is called the S wave. And then the next wave here is called the T wave. And then sometimes there is a U wave. This isn't always detectable on an ECG. If you look at this on a more professional looking um, basis, this is what that wave looks like. Okay, so this Q wave is what we're going to start looking at. And that's the negative deflection that precedes an R wave. And that represents the, the normal left to right depolarization of the intraventricular septum. Um, lots of words, but it's basically the, the beginning stages of the firing of your heart rate. So if we look at a point on this line right where that Q wave starts, okay, the next wave here is the R wave. That's the electrical uh, stimulus as it passes through the main portion of the ventricular walls in the heart, okay? So your R wave is this big guy here, spiking up. And then the um, S wave is the first downward deflection that occurs after the R wave. That would be this wave right here. Okay, and then the T wave represents the repolarization of the ventricle. So that would be this wave. What the more pro ECG tells you primarily, it lets you look at your waveform of the ECG and um, again, I'm not a doctor, I'm not a cardiologist, but you want your heart beats to be fairly regular and consistent. Um, any abnormalities in the, the way these lines move could indicate to a doctor, like I said, maybe an electrolyte imbalance or uh, AFib or something's going on with your heart. So if you start seeing wonky waveforms, that's an alert. Um, you should pay attention to that and go see a doctor. Um, but what this thing gives you number-wise, it shows your, your ECG, but it's really looking at what they call the QT interval. So it's from the beginning of this Q wave here, the very beginning here, to the end of the T wave. So if we 
I wish I was left-handed, but I'm not. So if we looked at the beginning of this Q wave here to the end of the T wave, this is the time that this device is giving you. This is called the QT interval, and that's the interval from the start of the Q wave to the end of the T wave, um, and that's considered, or what that's what's called an absolute refractory period. Now, the you know, they determine the end of this T wave by looking at the slope of this back part of this wave and they go to the zero line here, the isoelectric point, and that's what they consider the end of that peak. So the More Pro ECG is giving you the time for one of these refractory periods. Now normal for this cycle is between 300 and 450 milliseconds. If we go into the More Pro app, it is giving us our QT interval here. Oops, you see it right here, QT interval. Mine is 436 millivolts. Um, and it will let you take your ECG in real time. Again, if I were to do that, well, let's just go ahead and do one. Let's go ahead and do that. So to do this measurement, I will put my finger on this electrode here, and I'm going to go to Start Testing for ECG and click Start here. Now on the device itself, you can't really tell that anything is happening, but you will see this ECG form over time. It takes about a minute or so. Uh, my waves are going to be all wonky right now. I always get a little nervous and things get irregular. But you can see that cleaning up over time. How it takes this measurement, I'll leave you to research and study on your own. And what all these uh, graphs do and show you, uh, again, I'm not a cardiologist. You can study up on your own or talk to your cardiologist who can explain things. Um, but you're basically looking for a nice, consistent pattern that these things are, are spaced uh, apart pretty regularly um, as as your heartbeat again if you see any wonkiness or noisy baseline that could really be an indication that something's going wrong in your body or with your heart if the spacing gets out of whack or if these peaks are going in different directions to a trained doctor or cardiologist they're they're going to be able to diagnose that uh, so this is a good thing to keep an eye on to see if you see differences in your normal shape and that can really save your life if you're paying attention. Um, this really can be a lifesaver to help you spot problems going on before they become bigger problems. If we come into the settings here, you'll see a lot of uh, personalization you can do. Um, you can go into the device, you can set your goals, you can have it automatically wake up when you, you flick your wrist. Um, sedentary reminders to remind you to get up and walk. You can set your heart rate scope, what's in and out of scope, so it gives you a warning if your heart rate get, starts getting too high. Here's where you would display the, uh, get the display to light up just by rotating your wrist. You can adjust the brightness, different styles of the watch face, as I mentioned at the beginning. I like this one on the bottom because it's nice and big and easy to read. So, you know, alarm clock, you can have this thing buzz to wake you up. It's got a timer, a stopwatch. You can rotate your wrist to take a, a photo with your phone. I guess that's a cool feature. I've never used it. I don't understand the use for it, but, you know, hey, maybe the kids out there would uh, be digging on that. I don't know. Um, so these are all the options you have in this device. Again, uh, I give it a two huge thumbs up. For under $50, this thing is an amazing piece of technology that can really help you understand rest and recovery through its, I think, the industry-leading sleep analysis and detection here heart rate blood pressure and hrv and it can even save your life um, by keeping an eye on your electrocardiogram to understand what's going uh, on with your heart so the more pro ecg definitely a huge winner in my book and for under 50 dollars, i i don't know why uh, everybody isn't uh, wearing one of these uh, except maybe the fact that they don't know about it but uh, definitely a winner i would highly recommend it now on the underside here, you'll see there are your regular green diodes, and if we go to the uh, blood pressure mode here, I'm tapping on the front, you'll see the red diode. So again, this thing has both the green and red diodes in it. The display is nice and big and colorful and easy to read. I love this device. This is now taking up uh, residence on my left arm to track my rest and recovery, and I'm going to wear this most days all through the day. Uh, except when I'm in the gym, that's usually when I switch to the uh, Atlas wearables. So the More Pro ECG, 
Highly recommend it. You can't go wrong. And just to tease you a little bit, yesterday I got the uh, ActoFit Impulse in the mail. I'm willing to give these people one more try, and if they strike out this time, three strikes, you're out. But uh, I'll have this review coming in the next few weeks, so stay tuned.